Generate Blocks is about to make some amazing changes coming up in 2023. I believe the alpha versions are due to release in the first week of January, but I did go ahead and get my hands on them a little bit early and I've been playing around and I'm absolutely blown away by all the new possibilities we're gonna have. Now in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a few of the huge changes that are coming along inside of Generate Blocks so you can kind of get an idea of what you're gonna be seeing coming into 2023. Now I expect I'll do some more videos as the alpha and beta versions progress, but for now we're just gonna take a general overview of what's coming. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. So I think the first thing we need to look at is the container block. When we drop in a container, it will almost look the same until it actually hits the page. And you'll see here this UI looks a little bit different. Now in older versions of Generate Blocks, when you dropped in a container, it actually was two different divs. There was an outer div that created your section, and then there was an inner div that actually contained your content for that section. But now these are completely separated. Here, if you wanna add an inner container to contain your content, you can hit the insert inner container, and it will automatically set its width to whatever you've set as the default width for your content in the site. Now, this is actually gonna eliminate some of the extra divs that were created by Generate Blocks, which is a nice little bonus, but it gives us a lot more flexibility. The biggest difference in all this is now we have the display controls here for your containers. The biggest addition to this is the flex controls, but we have default block, inline block, flex, inline flex, and inline. But flex is really where you're gonna see so many new opportunities inside Generate Blocks. We'll go ahead and inside this outer container, we have one inner container already. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that. And we'll just drop two containers inside of it. So there's one and we'll duplicate it. We'll give each of these a different color. And we'll give them both just a little bit of padding so we can see how all these changes actually work. So now if I go to this outer container and we go up here to the display properties and we change this to flex, you can see there are some huge changes already. Now with this, we have all these flex controls. We can set this as row or column. We can even reverse either row or column layouts. We can align all the items and we can justify this content. This is gonna give us all kinds of opportunities that weren't available through the UI previously. There were all things you were gonna to have to do with writing CSS. Of course, we can change the wrap settings, we can change the column gap and the row gap. So the flex controls are really going to be a huge addition to generate blocks that's gonna give us a lot of opportunities we didn't have before. But what I think people are gonna be most excited about are the new blocks that are being added. We have both a tabs block and an accordion block. If we go ahead and add this accordion block and open up our list view, we can see it's added an accordion, an accordion item, and inside the item there's a title and accordion content. Of course, you can put anything inside this accordion content. In fact, you can really get creative here because everything is built modularly. This means we have the full controls over the title, including all the display properties, we can align things differently, we can add icons, and inside the content, of course, we can add any kind of block we want inside this content. I honestly think this is gonna be the most powerful accordion block for WordPress as soon as this hits the market. We'll take a look at a few examples here in just a moment, but before we do that, let's take a look at the new tabs block. So we'll go ahead and add in a tabs block here. And when we do that, we're given three different choices. We have horizontal tabs, vertical tabs, and button tabs. We'll go ahead and drop in a buttons tabs here and we'll open up the list view so we can take a look at everything. When we drop in the tabs block, we have this outer tabs block. Inside of it, we have a tabs button container. And this is a normal container with all of the controls for display and aligning things. And inside of it, we have the buttons for the tab. Of course, these buttons match up with the tab items. So if we went back here to our tabs and we created another one, we can see it added a third button and a third tab item. Again, just like the accordion block, all this is modular so we can mix and match things. We can style all these things independently and it really gives us a ton of flexibility. Let's take a look at some of the accordion options. So I've been playing around here. This is a pretty basic example of accordions, 
but we could also do this where we have a section and I've nested an accordion block inside of this container on the side where we could have different bullet points that open up to display more information or calls to action. And we could also do a more stylized FAQ section like this. Really, there are no limits to what you can do. But for me, I really think this tabs block is gonna change things. I've gone and found a bunch of different inspiration across the internet and created tab sections like this that span the whole width and let you tab between different sections. I've taken inspiration from ClickUp's website where we have these button tabs here. This is a vertical tab. Here you could create a different pricing grid. You can see this is the monthly pricing and here is the annual pricing. We could create this where we actually have this kind of nested in here. Again, I've taken some inspiration from another website and a different style on these vertical tabs. So for me, this tab block is really gonna unlock tons of possibilities. I really think all of these changes are gonna be a massive improvement to generate blocks, and it's really gonna put it on par or surpass any of the other block builders out there. Of course, I am biased in saying that, but there are some things I was feeling a little bit jealous about inside of some of the other block packages. And with this release, I think all of that is gonna be gone. One thing that I've noticed in playing with all of this is that the new container setup actually allows us to start using CSS Grid. Of course, right now you're gonna to have to write code to do all that, but I imagine that this is on the roadmap for Generate Blocks in the future to give us a full CSS Grid control inside of Generate Blocks, something that I'm really looking forward to. Now, unfortunately, there were a couple omissions from this update that I was hoping to see. We still can't use RIM across everything like I'd hoped we would, but really with so many huge advancements inside of this update, I can't complain. I'd love to know what you think about this update, so go ahead and leave a comment down below. And if you would, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit like and consider subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you in the new year with some new videos.